Hello everyone, today we're going to be playing with some 3D lighting. I'm going to be covering the three main lighting nodes and experiment a little bit with them to create some interesting scenes out of existing 3D models. I downloaded the models from a website and I'm planning on using them as examples, but you can create your own or you can find some other examples to play with here. Before we start, I would also like to update you guys on the dialogue system, which is a very requested topic. And I wanted to tell you that I'm doing an entire overhaul of how how it will look like. I ended up deciding not to go with the graph nodes, uh, kind of like the visual scripting ones. I'm going with a linear way because I feel like it makes more sense for the Godot UI. And when I was testing the other existing dialogue solutions, I feel like they occupy too much screen real estate for the little information that they are carrying. So to make it simpler and more accessible for me and for you to use it, I'm gonna go with a very linear approach, which doesn't mean that you won't be able to make branches, it just means that the information flow will be going from top to bottom. I added the models here, I just downloaded the FPX version and extracted the contents inside our project, so we have here the source with a lot of the images and here the FPX is the model that we want and here the other simple concert stage. So let's start with the concert stage because it's something that allows you to play a lot with lights. Uh, let's add the model here. Let's create a 3D scene. Let's save it like concert. And now that we have our scene, let's add the model. You can just add the model by drag and dropping the FBX to Godot and it should be there automatically. So you can see it already has the textures and it's looking quite good. Uh, one thing to remove saw through edges, I'm going to go to project, project settings. And then on quality here on rendering, on this one I'm going to be setting the MSAA to 8. And now we see that it's much sharper. Okay. So we have our stage here, but we need to have it at night because during the day we don't really need a lot of light. So let's create a new environment. By default, Godot will use this environment, which is the one that you're seeing with this sky. But if you want to change it and to do something else, you need to create one. You can modify the default one so all of them will be modified or you can create one for each of your scenes in this case i'm gonna be creating one just to experiment with it and keeping the default there so let's add one and world environment node and here we need to do new environment and you see that all the scene changes to light so now in the background we want to have a sky and since I don't have any images of sky or things like that you can create one with Godot using the procedural sky so as you can see this is the default we're back to square one but now we can customize it I'm gonna open this procedural sky for the sky I'm gonna go for top color something darker because it's by night so okay and for the horizon, let's go with a deep blue something. Okay. As you can see, the sky also affects the scene because the color of the light of the scene will bounce everywhere and will absorb the color of your sky. So if your sky is super pink, all the scene will get pink. In this case, since we're going dark and dark and dark, it's going to be darker. Okay, now I see that that's the default sun. We, we don't want the sun. So let's just remove it by moving it on this guy. Let's put it there. Should be here on the floor. Okay, goodbye sun. And for the ground, let's go with very dark black because if it's night, we don't want to see a lot. And for the horizon, the same. So now we have here our stage is super dark. And let's now add some lights. First of all, we need to add the moonlight. Like it's very rare to have pitch black if it's open air. So a moon would be nice. And to do that, we can do it with the node, which is here on spatial, visual instance, light directional light. This is for a sun or a moon or anything like that. 
as the description says, a directional light on all the scenes. So all the elements will have that light. Let's create it. And it's very, very bright. And we cannot see the sand because we have it hidden. But the important note that we need to have here is this one. The direction of this yellow arrow or this this white arrow, not yellow, uh, it's pointing where the light will go. In this case, it's going to the scene pointing in that way. And we want to modify it. Let's add like a little bit of an angle and maybe even like it's going from above, something like that. And yeah. Let's also modify it. Let's make the light go a little bit darker. So it's not like illuminating everything. Okay, this is starting to look. It's not as dark if you hide it, it's black, but now you know you can see a little bit. And also shadows, yeah, shadows will add a nice effect to it, like it's actually night. And you can see that it's generating it. It's not super precise, and you can see here that the shadows usually don't correspond exactly with the object. You can adjust that with the bias, but the closer you get it, the more graphical glitches that you might get. So the default is usually fine, but you can play with this value, and as you can see, it's getting closer and closer to the model. Uh, so yeah. Also for the light, maybe I'm going to make it a bit darker again to see, okay, a little bit less. And we need to start adding some lights to the scene. In this case, it's a literal scenario. So let's add a spotlight, which is something that you usually see in these kind of scenes. Let's go with the spotlight. Okay, so here we have it. Spotlight is, as you might have guessed it, one light that goes exactly to one spot in particular. And you can see here these two handles. One is for the length, the distance. The other one is for the size. So if we move it there and we rotate this down, we start seeing this more like a theater light, you know, and we can put it almost there and just to the center so our oops so our star has some lighting okay so we have some lighting here and as you can see this light is not casting any shadows but you can enable that always here in this case we don't really need it because the spotlight should be simple enough but if you want to you can do it and it will add some extra lighting there so we have two directional shadows. This is from the moon and this is from the spotlight. Remember that if you're starting to use a lot of lighting with shadows, the games are going to be demanding in performance. So if you are doing a mobile game or anything that requires very low specs, the shadows might not be the best thing to enable in all your lights, maybe in one or two, and you can use the rest for more like a decorations thing. But yeah. Let's now do something interesting, which I don't see much on tutorials, but I really want you to know, which is, let's duplicate this light, control D, let's move it here, and let's change the color, let's see, light color, let's do, I don't know, green, okay, something like that, and let's duplicate this one and move it to the other side, and the light, this one will be, I don't know, blue. Okay. If you have a scene like this and you want to add a little movement, you can create an animation node, animation player node, and a new animation, in this case, lights. And now let's animate this light so they rotate with time. Let's enable the auto start and the animation looping. That means that whenever it goes to the end, it will come at the beginning. And let's set the parameters. So in this case, we want this light here in transform. We want to have the rotation as a keyframe. So whenever I press on this key, I'm gonna create a new track. And in that track, it will say, okay, when you are on the second zero, 
you are here. But when you are on the second one, you're there. Let's see how it works. You're going to get it better like this. So let's create a new track for this. Now I'll move this, which is the timeline, to 0 0.5, so the middle of the animation. And I'm going to rotate this to the opposite side, so the light will look there. And I'm going to press on the key again. And since it's looping, the rest will come back to the same position. So we have this effect. Let's play it. And we see that it's super fast. Okay. So on our animation player, on the playback options, we can change the speed. So let's move it slower. 0 0.1, something like that. Okay, 0 0.2. So you see here that the animation started playing and our lights are moving and that's super nice to have on a level if you want to do some decoration in this case if you want to add some background music and you want to animate the lights you can do a, a show with lights. Um, let's do the same with the other light. So let's select it, transform, rotation degrees, create, let's go to the middle, we rotate it to the opposite side. Let's press there again. So we have these two lights. And they move very robotic, which in this case it doesn't matter because you know lights in stages are very robotic. But you can change the curve, the interpolation curve. Uh, this is very similar to Twin if you've seen other tutorials. And let's do with Cubic, which makes it go smoother. You can see the difference on the green one and the blue one, like one like goes to the end and then goes back again. So let's do cubic for both. I feel like this, it's much better. So there we have like some 3D lights and our stage. Let's now use this effect to create a different environment. Gonna create a new scene. And in this scene, I'm gonna add the other model that I downloaded, in this case is a gas station, the FBX model here. It's quite huge. Okay, we see here we have the gas station. And actually, you know, we can do it again by night. I feel like it's easier to add some light by night. So I'm going to go and copy this environment. It's going to be by night as well. So let's save it as night sky and let's open here add a new world environment and load the night sky okay it's night again okay let's do the same let's add a directional light in this case it's gonna be the moon let's do it something like this so it illuminates our scene let's make it dark and I don't want it to cast any shadows because I want the scene to be very dark itself. Let's let's have some lighting here because the doors are usually, even if it's closed, are usually light. And instead of using a spotlight, which goes exactly to one place, we're going to use another kind of light, which are the Visual Instance Light Omni Light. This is for anything else that you don't want to be like super directional or to global. So it's just a ball of light with very defined edges on a, on a sphere and you can place it anywhere in your 3D scene to illuminate anything. Okay, so where it is, it is there. So let's move it closer to here. Okay, here we have it. And let's put it there under this roof. Okay. Now, since it's kind of weird that it's going all around this roof, let's make it to cast shadow. So yeah, we don't see it there. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Okay. And maybe here on the properties, maybe like the attenuation goes like there and the range yeah and yeah that that's more or less how i want that one let's also change the color a little bit so it doesn't look that fake 
So in this case, let's make it a bit orangey. Okay, something like that. And maybe you notice, but there's no floor here. So the light is not illuminating the floor because there isn't any. So let's let's add some with a C CSG, CSG box. If you've seen my how to make a 3D game tutorial, you will find a better explanation of how to use this kind of nodes. In this case, we're just going to build an empty one, a block that we have here. Okay, let's stretch it a little bit thinner and let's make it super wide. So like this and like this. So this is going to be our floor and okay now we have some light also on the floor because we actually have one <laughs> you can add some textures to that or whatever you need to and by using the animations as well i'm gonna be creating the effect that there are some cars going through and this is super simple to do and maybe even like with a spotlight or a regular light but let's go with the spotlight Let's say that this is our car right now. And as you can see, it looks kind of like the lights of a car, but yeah, let's make it like this. Okay. And now maybe a little bit dimmer. We want to be okay. And to cast some shadows, we enable the shadows. And okay, they are bugging a little bit. Now that we have our light card, let's make an animation node, same as we did before. And let's create the illusion that the cars are going by. This case is going to be like this. So now we have here the animation player. Let's create a new one. So cars. And we want to set the transform, which is the position, the current position that we have and let's create this. This is the first place where it's going to be. The last place is going to be there. So we move the cursor there. We move the light. We press again here. And to do a small trick, since we don't want to also show that light again, let's do here a little bit behind what our camera will be. Okay there, and let's loop it by also adding one at the end, which is going to be around there. Okay, so it's a bit weird, but if you see the this loop is gonna be like this. We know that it's only one light, but it will look like different light different cars <laughs> are passing by. Let's modify the speed, let's see how it looks like. Okay, there we will be faster. Let's do the autoplay. And yeah, you see that the shadows are also moving there. So it looks like cars are passing by. We can add a camera to see how it looks like in on game. So let's do a camera. I'm gonna split this view into two, two viewports. And I want to have one viewport as the preview of the camera and the other one I'm going to be using it for moving the camera. In this case I want the camera to be looking there so it's like a nice shot of the entire gas station. Okay maybe a bit okay there that looks nice okay there and let's try it out let's save this as gas station and let's see how it looks like so here we have our scene and it seems like cars are passing by it's kind of weird the effect that i did with the loop but you can see the shadow there and i think it looks quite nice let's see how the concert one looks like let's add a camera same as we did with the other one um let's see Let's split the viewport. Use this one as the preview. Okay, move it there. A bit there. 
and there on the center let's try it out and we have here the lights this one looks much nicer because i feel like it, it fits the, the theme so yeah here we have a few experiments of how to work with some lights and how to use them in your games for your 3d scenes also you've seen how easy it is to import some models like fbx especially i think this was something quite recent added to the Godot engine but it's super nice to work with and you don't have to worry about anything else if you're working with somebody else you can ask for this and all the textures and the materials are already done for you um, which is quite nice so I hope you like this tutorial and if you want to see more, please subscribe, press like, the bell, all those things. You can also follow me on Twitter, which I'm quite active. You can join our Discord if you want to ask me some questions. And if you want to support my work, you can support me on Patreon because it's thanks to my patrons that I'm able to do what I do. And stay tuned for the next video on the dialogue system. I know a lot of you are really looking forward to it. See you there. Bye.